another one that um, uh, causes trouble in the delivery room is tetralogy with absent primary valve. On the inside, it's a tetralogy with a big hole in the heart and an overriding aorta. But as you angle up towards the pulmonary outflow tract, it's not a thick, small pulmonary valve, but actually a dilated annulus with a valve that's really not opening or closing. And then really massively dilated branch pulmonary arteries that affect the lungs. There's not usually a ductus in this disease, which is interesting. And then obviously the biggest problem is significant pulmonary insufficiency, which is this red jet here. So the mortality in this group, uh, looking at multiple studies in the literature, is pretty high, between 40 and 70 percent. Um, but what's really interesting is that there are two very distinct subgroups that get reported time and time again in multiple different papers. About half of these patients have no respiratory symptoms in the delivery room and actually are straightforward tetralogy patients that can be repaired electively. And then the other half have significant respiratory compromise with CO2 retention and acidosis and hypoxia right in the delivery room. And we think it's obviously due to multiple factors, but tracheobronchial malacia um, and lung hypoplasia or hyperexpansion, congenital lobar emphysema with air trapping. The mortality um, in the literature, single center studies, high drops, uh, any right or left ventricular dysfunction, there's an associated genetic abnormality. This is often uh, associated with microdeletion on uh, uh, chromosome 22. Um, but interestingly, it's not the size of the branch pulmonary arteries in these single center studies. And so it's not a direct correlate of the big pulmonary arteries are pushing on the tracheobronchial tree. However, if you have respiratory symptoms at birth, you're more likely to die. Uh, and so then our challenge as the fetal cardiologist try to predict which one of those babies are going to have respiratory symptoms. So we took this challenge on uh, at Children's National, and this is one of my fellows put together a multi-center study that was published uh, this year. 19 centers, um, uh, we had 78 patients with an intent to treat, so that took out the terminations. Uh, 71 of those survived the birth, so a 9% in utero mortality. And again, that 50-50 rule sort of held up with 53% having an elective repair with an overall good survival. Uh, and then the other half either died without intervention or surgery because they were just so sick. 30% uh, of them required emergency surgery to try to um, sort of uh, open up that outflow tract to take the pressure off the lungs uh, with a 71% survival. Echo predictors of death included a big heart, uh, moderate or severe right-sided dilation, any left-sided dilation, RV or LV dysfunction, and a large pulmonary valve Z-score, which really um, is a correlate for the amount of pulmonary insufficiency. Interestingly, we as well found that the size of the branch pulmonary arteries didn't matter. Um, and we did try to look at lung findings that you would see on fetal echo. So it's really how the lung affects the heart, uh, mediastinal shift, and left or right lung enlargement or compression were, in fact, associated with poor outcome. So now we take this same patient and we kind of ignore the heart and try to look at the lungs. It's a little bit of a challenge on ultrasound. Maybe this lung is a little bit brighter than this lung. This lung looks bigger. Is this lung smashed or is it hypoplastic? So for this particular patient, we used fetal MRI. And the only surprise was how easy it was that the lung was really abnormal. So here you can see a massively di um, dilated right lung that's full of fluid. Um, the left lung is the sliver back here. The heart is the black um, in the middle here. And you can see this big right lung, hypoplastic left lung, and we were even able to see deviation of the trachea on this study. Um, so this fluid-filled lung will become an air-filled lung with air trapping and CLE what we anticipated, um, so certainly this is a high-risk diagnosis. That's exactly what happened. This kid deteriorated rapidly and had to, uh, to be cannulated onto ECMO. We had it ready to go right in the delivery room. So what do we do for these kids? Um, first off, you can try prone position for the ones that aren't quite so severe, sometimes pulling uh, the, the pulmonary arteries off the airway can help. Um, but the ones that we really expect to be sick, again, uh, intubate, sedate, and paralyze to control that ventilation. 
goal is to minimize air trapping. Um, the last thing you want to do is blow a pneumo in addition to the other things that are going on. You want to try to decrease pulmonary resistance. Again, oxygen and nitric oxide. Uh, and we always have ECMO backup 